Greetings, snot pickers. Right, you may notice as I pan around, and we've had a bit of a clear up in the workshop. Yes, and uh, a bit of fabrication going on over there. So we now got a new, uh, a new bench to play around with, and everything is tidied. So now that we're in here. I'm going to show you pretty much what a worn out crankshaft looks like. Worn out doesn't mean absolutely blown up. Worn out can still look pretty serviceable even though it's worn out. So what we're going to do in our uh, limited light capacity is show you the main bearings, the main journals. Right, now, I'll just let my camera focus. Run your finger now across your journal. If you can pick up, stop messing about with the focus. If you can pick up any scoring, heavy scoring along there, then your crankshaft's basically worn out. Now, I can actually feel at the high spot here because on the bearing, there's a, there's a, a recess there. That's how the oil gets to the crank. Um, but that is actually raised, which means that these sides here that rub on the bearing, they're worn. So that main journal, and obviously that one and all, they're quite badly worn. But they're not so much uh, a thing, although they are important, they're usually, in other bikes, they're usually ball bearings. So that doesn't get anywhere at all, but on this bike, they are actually plain bearings, as you can see in there inside my uh, tool I've had made to uh, insert them correctly back into the crankcase hole but we'll come to that later on basically the main sticking point with these is the big ends now there's a roller bearing in there and a pair of thrust washers on either side now before we get into that one, let's get one out of the box. Ay, ay, ay. Heavy, heavy. Right, this is brand new, straight out of the box, 286 crankshaft. So, grab hold of your little end and rock your conrod from side to side. Now you can see the cranks moving. That's basically because there's virtually no play in there. I can feel the tiniest amount, but next to nothing. Nothing at all, look. Nothing at all. Right, so we'll put that back over there because we know that one's good because they've just bought it. Now we'll check this bad boy. Here we go now. He's playing, uh, playing hard to get. There you go. Can you see that between the webs? You can see it there. Look at it. So that is quite heavily worn roller bearings inside my big end. Who were giggity? So, if you, so it's difficult to do this with one hand, but basically if you bang the bearing on the top here with your hand, like that, you need to grab all of it with one hand and smack it with the other hand, you'll hear a clunking. Can you pick up that clunk, 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 clunk? That's the actual rod moving up and down on the play in the bearings. So, as that that is a that was a running bike. The bike was running like this, and it would have carried on running for quite a lot longer. But it wouldn't have sounded very nice, and eventually something would have let go, kabang, and that would have been the end of it. So there you go. That's how uh, that's how you need to check. You begin bearing 
and catch things before they get out of hand. Right, so next thing we've got to do is um, find that uh, electric pump I've got and rig up some sort of washing tank. So I can start washing this engine up. And then I've got the mystery of trying to size the main bearings to get new bearings. Um, I've been to all the Honda shops in town and they've all said they don't change the rear bearings when they rebuild an engine because uh, it's too difficult. Because there's so many different undersizes, they said when they change the bearings, the crankshafts won't turn anymore. Well, that's who you're paying money to, to get your engines repaired. And they've told me, they don't change the bearings, it's too difficult. I'll leave you with that one, while I uh, prepare my wash tank and then measure up my cranks to see what bearings we need. See you in the next one. Rio now.